Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake with Redefine Horizons, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do uh, what we call Pultris, a preliminary land title report analysis sheet. Uh, this is something that you have to do on Caltrans projects, but we do it on all of our projects where we're mapping easements and going through a title report. So uh, I apologize in advance for two things. My dog Bella is chewing her bone in the background, and she's probably noisy, and this is going to be a really boring video. So. All right, there you go. All right, so if you're at my shop, you go into the land title folder, and that's where you'll find the title report. You want to make sure that you're reviewing the current title report, so we'll open that up. So this is a title report for a job that we just finished in Stockton. And uh, what you want to do when you, you, so there's a lot of things that we look at in a title report, but for the poultrist, what you're worried about is the list of exceptions, okay? And so here's the list of exceptions. For this title report, we have, uh, 33 so there's uh, oh you know what this is the wrong sorry this is the wrong project let's go into the right project all right this one shouldn't quite have as have quite as many <laughs> exceptions so here's the exceptions for this parcel so we've got let's see uh, we've got 25 but a bunch of these were deleted Okay, so I normally when you see this, it, it, I actually prefer when the title company does this if they delete a, an exception because otherwise they renumber the exceptions and that makes it really hard to update the survey. So it's okay when you see this intentionally deleted, that, that's not a problem. Okay, so we want to uh, first thing we want to do is find our list of exceptions, which we've got here. Okay, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and open up our Poultress. Okay, I need to get that. So. If you're at my shop, you are going to go into our templates folder and under land title, you'll find the Poultress template. So we're just going to copy that, drop it in here, and then we're going to just rename it. So we'll take template off the end. Okay. And uh, we'll go ahead and open this up. So here's what a poultress looks like. Okay, so we're gonna fill out some information at the top here, and then we're gonna add um, some information for each exception in, in the title report. And the, the whole point of the poultress is to make sure that we don't miss anything in the title report, that we've looked at every exception, we understand what exceptions are serious matters and which ones need to be mapped, okay? So <clears throat> what we're gonna do here is uh, we're going to go ahead and, and put some information in about uh, the parcel. So uh, we're going to fill out this top section here. Okay, so the parcel address is uh, 1111 Navy Drive in Stockton. Okay, and then we want uh, the uh, APN number, which uh, will usually be in the title report. It's not always, but it will usually be. Yeah, I don't see it here. I think this one you got, I got to pull it off the map at the end actually, so. Okay, all right, so we are, uh, this parcel right here, so we are 163-26-07. So we're gonna say 160, say APN, 163-230-07, that's how it would look in, in the county that we're in. Okay, and right here we're gonna put my name, completed by, so I'm the one doing this. Okay, then we wanna put in the PTR uh, identifier and the report date, because we wanna be able to, to identify what title report was used to prepare the poultress. Okay, so here is the preliminary title report number. Okay, so copy that. And every title company, their numbers, every title company has a slightly different format for their number. Okay, and then the date, we want the date of the title report, which is usually on the first or second sheet. So right here, second sheet was done December 28th, 2021. Okay, and so that's the top section, that's done. Um, and so then we're gonna, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna do the actual uh, exceptions, which is the, the, the bulk or the meat of the, of the poultress. All right, guys, so uh, we're gonna start here adding these exceptions. So we're gonna go down to our exception list. So right here is the first exception. It's intentionally deleted. Uh, we're gonna have several of those. 
Um, so what we do here is this, this top row, we're going to fill out this information for each of these columns. And then this is where we just put brief notes if needed. Okay, so uh, because this was deleted, most of these are going to be not applicable. Okay, so we don't leave anything blank. So we're going to say not applicable, recording date not applicable, exception type. Okay, so right here we're just going to say deleted exception. Nappable is not applicable. Name description type not applicable. Primary encumbrance type not applicable. Grantor not applicable. Grantee not applicable. Okay, then for notes, we're just going to put a uh, deleted exception right there. Okay, so that takes care of number one, and we're just going to we're going to work through all of these here. So then number two, okay, so number two right here is for taxes, taxes and assessments. Okay, so is number three, so is number four, and that's pretty typical. You usually have two or three or four exceptions for for taxes early on in the list of exceptions. So. Again, document identifier here is going to be not applicable. Recording date is going to be not applicable. Okay, the exception type is just taxes. Okay, um, it's not applicable. It's not mappable. There is no land description. Okay, primary encumbrance type we're going to say not uh, not applicable. Okay, and the grantor and grantee is not applicable. Okay, and we could put a note in here. Um, we could we could just we could put a note in here just to give a little more information. So we're going to say um, exception for general taxes. Okay. Now we've got a couple more tax related exceptions here, so we're just going to copy this row down and paste it. Okay. Then exception three is for taxes, but it's for school bonds. So we're going to say exception for school bond taxes. Okay. And then number four is um, again just just taxes so this is for supplemental taxes so we're going to say exception for supplemental taxes okay okay and you can see i got a i got a formatting problem here don't i so let's do this so we want to keep our borders in excel correct because then it'll, then it'll print properly you'll see that here at the end all right so number five we got right away for ditches and canals in this deed okay so this is going to actually have some information in it okay so I'm gonna pull that off my screen for a minute that tower report so this is gonna be so we do have a document identifier here so it's OR official records 1583 dash 0075 okay uh, the recording date is December 3rd, 1953, okay, and this is for um, easement for ditches, oh, we're just going to put easement here, sorry, okay, is it mappable, we're going to see that, we got to look at the actual deed to figure that out, we got to look at it to the de easement deed to figure out the land description type, okay, primary encumbrance type, this is going to be, um, I would put this under utility easement, Grantor, this is going to be the United States of America. And usually the title company doesn't put the grantee in the description on the title um, the title report exception, so you got to look at the actual doc. So we're going to click this to get the actual doc. Okay. So here's the actual doc. Okay, so this was given to... Uh, that's not very helpful. Uh, let's see. So the title company might have linked to the wrong doc. They sometimes do that, um, but they uh, link to it down here in this next this next this next one for the next exception six is the actual document. So this is a quick claim deed from the United States. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, and it's to the city of Stockton. Okay, so it's from the U.S. to the city of Stockton, and it's got a meets and bounds land description. Okay, so we're going to enter that information into our spreadsheet here. Okay, so this is to uh, the city of Stockton, and this is uh, meets and bounds, okay. and it is mappable. It's meets and bounds, so it is mappable. Okay, I don't like this date format. 
I like year, month, and day. So let's fix that uh, date. Okay, so we're just going to put a note in here, uh, easement, um, uh, let's say easement, reservation for ditches and canals, okay, and let's just go back and check this dock again. Oh, I didn't save it, alright, hang on guys. Okay, so this is actually the land they're granting. Okay, so then this is the important language right here. They subject it to a right of way for Pershing Avenue for the maintenance of pipe, electrical, and conduit lines, and the, for maintenance repair of a sewer line. And then they get they do give a um, so this is a strip description with no meets and bounds for the sewer line. Okay. So I don't see anything in here about ditches. Okay, so we're gonna just come in here and we're gonna say, okay, um, we're gonna say title report lists right away reservation for ditches and canals. No reservation for that purpose found in the actual document. And that's something we need to probably also note in our on the face of our survey. Okay, and the actual description for the easement is not meets and bounds, it's strip. So it's a strip description, non meets and bounds. Okay, but we can still map it because it calls out some old roads and stuff and we know where those are at. Okay, so that's the kind of information that's really important to include. Okay, and then um, We've got basically the same description for exception six, except the note's gonna be a little different. Okay, so we can copy this and drop that in there. It's the same document, okay, but we're gonna say, is it the same doc? Let's see what the first page of that doc is. Yeah, no, so there, we might be missing a doc, that, that other doc. Uh, I don't think we have everything we need. So this is 76, actually. Okay, no reservations. Okay, so that's not true. So in this case, we do have the reservation. Um, so we're gonna say title, no, so we're just gonna say um, document reserves uh, utility easement and sewer easement. All right, then seven, we got a storm and sewer easement here. Okay, so we got to fill that information out. So it's book 3363, page 60. So this is OR 33. I got that, I can't remember the volume number now. 3363, sorry. Okay, and this is. Um, so it's for storm and sewer, uh, but it doesn't, it, for whatever reason, they don't tell us who the grantee is. Okay, so, but the, do they give us the recording date? Uh, they do give us the recording date, January 7th, 1970. Okay. Um, I actually like this format better for in here, so, all right. Okay, so this is also an easement. And we don't know if it's mappable or what type of description it is, but it is a utility easement. And we don't know the grantor grantee, so let's go pull the actual doc and see what we're dealing with here. Okay, so this is from Stockton City Council. They're gonna abandon these streets. Okay, and that's why they didn't have a grantor grantee listed. Okay, so they're gonna abandon these streets and reserve a utility right away. So I've already looked at this, okay, so, but that's why we don't have a grantor grantee. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our spreadsheet. So there is gonna be no grantor grantee. 
Um, the land description type is um, strip, not meets and bounds. So they're in the street right away, but um, they don't, uh, and it's not mappable. So it's blanket over the roads. Okay, so we're gonna just say blanket, utility, easement, over, uh, road, right away. I'm gonna say street, public, street, right away, being abandoned by this document. Okay, so that's pretty typical. When when cities abandon roads, they will typically reserve, uh, they will reserve an easement. And I'm gonna put uh, just not applicable in here because it doesn't really have an, a, a true land description. Let's go make sure that before I lie on my video, let's go look and see what we got here. I might have locked it up. Oh, there it is. Okay, so it's these streets bounded by these streets. Um, okay, so I'm gonna say that is a legal description, but it's bounds only. Okay. Okay, and uh, right here we're just gonna put in, uh, this is a, or I'm gonna say uh, the public street right away is being abandoned by the city of Stockton. Okay. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Uh, so that was number seven. Then we have an easement for stormwater purposes. Okay, so it's book 3815, page 282, book 3815, 282. Okay, the date it was recorded was November 2nd, 1973. Okay, this is an easement. It is also a utility easement. Okay, uh, the grantor is city, nope, this is, Granted to, so the grantee is City of Stockton. So to get the grantee and the and if it's mappable in the land description, we got to go to the actual docs. So let's do that. All right. So this is um, from Safeway Stores Incorporated to the City of Stockton. So that's our grantor. Safeway Stores Incorporated. And let's see if it's mappable and what kind of description it's got in it. So here's our description, strip description, 10 feet in width. Okay, and I'm gonna call this meets and bounds even though it doesn't have bearings in it, it does have some distances. So we're gonna say um, strip. It's a strip description, meets and bounds and it is mappable. Okay, and this is a, a utility easement granted to the city of Stockton, and this is actually storm and sewer, so we can put that in here. Okay, so then we got 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 are all deleted items. Okay, so nine through 14 are deleted. So what we can do is just come up here and get this deleted exception. Okay, and we're gonna just paste the values here. No, it won't let me do that because I got merged cells. So what you gotta do is you gotta take this row first. Okay, and we're just gonna paste values. So we got nine through 14, we're just pasting values. They're all deleted exceptions. Okay, then we'll come up and copy this note separately. Okay, so that takes care of nine to 14. All right guys, sorry my phone's ringing. Let me pause the video. All right guys, sorry about that. I know you don't wanna see my bald head. Let me put my hat back on. All right, okay, so now we're getting into some more interesting stuff. So we got uh, 15, 
Uh, this is just some, these are what I call boilerplate exceptions, okay, so they don't refer to a specific document. They're just the title company kind of covering their rear end. Um, and so we have we have four of them here, okay, so um, actually five, six, seven, okay, so these are all boilerplate. So let's let's deal with these first two. These are the fact that the, that the documents are within the boundaries of a redevelopment project. Okay, so uh, we're, what we're going to do here, so uh, these are also going to be not applicable. Okay, but they're a little bit different because what we're going to say here instead of deleted exception is what we call these boilerplate. Okay, so these are boilerplate exceptions and then we just want to put a note in. What is it? So it's a boilerplate exception for the location of the subject parcel within a redevelopment district. We don't even have redevelopment districts anymore, but the tile company's got it in there. So, okay, and then we can actually copy that because they did it for two different redevelopment districts. So we will put that in there. Okay, and then we can actually copy this for the next the next few because we've got a few of these. So 17 is a boilerplate for water rights, which is pretty typical. So again, we're just going to put in a note. I can't spell boilerplate, apparently. Boilerplate exception for water rights. And that's pretty typical. You see that in almost every title report. Okay, so then that takes care of 17. 18, uh, rights of the public uh, in and to any portion of the land within any streets. So that's another pretty kind of typical boilerplate um, exception, which by the way, if you're getting an Alta survey, I think that should be re removed from the exception list. The title company needs to take it out. So that's boilerplate exception for rights to public streets, roads, and alleys. Uh, 19, this is a really weird thing because this is um, what used to be agricultural. They've got this thing that, you know, if somebody created a lien based on this Perishable Agricultural Commodities Act, they're going to exclude that from coverage. Okay, so this is just going to be, um, we're going to put in here uh, the, the exception type is a lien and we're going to say exception for uh, any liens related to agricultural products. Okay, not a survey matter, not something I'm super worried about as a surveyor. Okay, 20 is the standard survey exception. Okay, so uh, we're gonna just call that what it is, survey exception. Okay, and right here we're gonna put uh, this is the standard survey exception. So that should also be removed since we're gonna deliver a survey on this. Okay, 21 is another standard boilerplate for rights of parties in possession. By the way, that should also be removed after the ALT survey is delivered. Okay, so this is a boilerplate again. And this is a boilerplate, I'll just say boilerplate, boilerplate exception for rights of parties and possession. So that's just squatters, adverse possession, prescriptive rights. That's what that's for. Okay, and we got uh, 22 is intentionally deleted. So we can just co come up and copy that from up above here. Okay, don't fall asleep yet, we're almost done. All right, uh, 23 is a requirement to have um, a First American approved notary. Uh, 20, let's, so let's just do that one. So this is, a, this is not a survey matter. Okay, so uh, what I like to call this is land title company requirement and this will be uh, we're just going to say we're just going to requirement 
for documents to be signed by a title company approved notary. So apparently they're picky about who their notary is. Okay, then 24 is, um, I, I, I don't know if I've ever seen this before, but um, this is the, the, the actual particular search statement they want um, on the uh, survey. So that is also a land title company requirement. And we're just gonna say, um, uh, we're gonna say uh, required language for the land title survey certification statement. Okay, and then this that's one more. Okay, so and this is pretty typical. Anytime you've got an LLC or a corp, the title company is going to require docs. So that is another land title company requirement. And in our note, we're just going to say uh, requirement that the title company be provided with uh, incorporation documents and other documents related to the corporate, uh, to, uh, let's just say to the company owner. Okay, so that's it. That's how you do a poultress. Uh, that was a good example because there, was, there wasn't a ton of exceptions, but there was a good mix there. Um, I'm, I may do some more videos on, on this, but this gives you guys the general idea. I know this was like two or three times as long as my normal video, but um, it's important. And if you're working for a shop like mine, you need to know how to do this. And again, the whole, the whole purpose of this is to make sure that we've looked at every exception in the title report. And then what we want to do is uh, anywhere it's mappable, um, we can come in here and change the color of our text. I'm gonna just use purple. Okay, because we wanna make sure that anything that is mappable, we have shown, we have plotted on the survey, if it can be plotted. Okay, now this one can't be plotted, but I'm gonna put it in red, because we need a big nasty note about that. This one can be plotted. Put that in purple. Okay, so we've got three easements to plot on this survey. Okay, and uh, there you go. Poultress is done. Appreciate you guys watching, and we will catch you on our next training.